city has agreed to send us five dozen guardsmen. Not raw recruits. Uh, with luck, they'll know which end to grip a sword by. All right. Where were you raised, Josephine? I was born in Antiva City, but when I turned 15, mother declared I'd attend finishing school in Val Royal. Oh, but I bawled into her skirts the day I had to leave. Did they have to pry your fingers off the door frame as well? Admittedly, I may have been a trifle sheltered, but my mother only wanted the best for me. Living in Orlais was an education in itself. What did you learn at this finishing school in Val Royale? Well, among other things, mathematics, rhetoric, poetry, history, logic, and a great deal of etiquette. I still remember Madame Beventir's switch on my knuckles when I forgot the basic tenets of Nevaran dining customs. For a dowager approaching her 80th year, she had quite the arm. How did the younger you like Val Royale when you arrived? Have you ever stepped into a new city and felt the buildings couldn't possibly be real? Well, that was Val Royale to me. So beautifully foreign, I gaped at its spires for months. Does Antiva City have nothing that compares to Val Royale? Antiva City is a jewel among the capitals. <sighs> but I did not appreciate that before I traveled. There are multitudes of places I'd like to see. Seheran, the Anderfeld, whatever lies past the Amaranthine Ocean. Who rules Antiva? Officially, the Principality of Antiva is governed by His Majesty King Fugelno II. In reality, Antiva's merchant princes rule the country in everything but name. Quite loudly, I might add. What sort of dealings did you have with these merchant families? As ambassador, I attended Privy Council meetings in a mediatory capacity. May I just say, one has never heard an argument until they've sat in on 15 princes howling down each other's tariff suggestions. If you must deal with legislation, at least it's lively. It's all a part of life in Antiva. Our traditions value passion and romance. A certain exuberance of style. Are you positive you're Antivan? I can be most exuberant when it's called for, just at the right moments, and in a proper fashion. Might we speak of something else? What's the land like in Antiva? The settled areas are quite lush. The vineyards run as far as the eye can see in some places. Antiva City, however, perches right up against the Rialto Bay. That's what I miss most. The sea crashing against the maze of the docks. I have difficulty seeing you wandering round a trading port. Everyone in Antifa City spends time by the ships, my lord. The finest restaurants and poets all make their habitation by the sea. The waterfronts never still. Lanterns are lit along the promenade no matter what the weather. Are you ever homesick? Occasionally. When a breeze stirs the trees in the garden, I sometimes pretend it's the sound of the surf. <sighs> Do you know, I even miss those terrible squawking birds infesting the harbor. My younger sister used to throw whole loaves of bread to the gulls. Silly thing. You haven't really gone into detail about how you know Liliana. We met... Oh, let me think. We met the last few years of my schooling, but we became friends after I became ambassador to Olay. It seems terrifyingly long ago now. How exactly did you and Leliana reconnect in the Inquisition? I discovered my family had been overcharging a merchant we traded with for months. Our name carries a great deal of trust in Antiva. 
I spent weeks arranging a string of favors as suitable recompense. Apparently satisfied, the merchant extended me an invitation to her estate. Leliana greeted me in place of the merchant. I assume the entire problem was some form of trial. You assume correctly. Leliana claimed she needed someone of painful integrity for the Inquisition. I accepted, once she finally explained what it was. Do you remain close? Yes, but she's grown so much more distant than the outgoing woman I met in Val Royale. Leliana used to wander the Orlesian courts, singing the sweetest songs, charming the greatest wits. Now she collects secrets and takes risks that would make empires tremble. I worry, but she will not hear it. Does Leliana confide in you? She enjoys revisiting our more disastrous adventures. Leliana used to concoct the most ridiculous plans. Run if you ever see her with a twine ball, a measuring stick, and a handkerchief. Tell me about the Montilliers. Well, uh, my parents are alive and in good health. Uh, they live in our estate in Antiva City. Of my four siblings, most attend to the running of the family vineyards. Oh, that reminds me. I must ask someone to make sure Yvette attends the spring reception at the palace. My youngest sister has no head for social engagements. Why are you overseeing your siblings' social lives? It's Antivan custom. After a certain age, the heir apparent runs the family's estates to prove they're worthy of succession. If you're unfit for the task, the heads of the house, usually one's parents, may decree a new heir. What do these Antivan heads of the household do if they don't run it? They work and provide guidance. I've taken advice from my parents. Well, mostly mother. Father's more of an artist. It's rather gauche, but we never can dissuade him from running his own salons. Between him and my siblings, mother's looking forward to my taking over the estate. I imagine there must be give and take between a family heir and their parents. There is a fair amount of arbitration. A bickering, if one is less polite. But managing the estate is my duty. As much work as it is, I will not shirk it. Is running your family's estate that important to you? I'm responsible for their welfare. A Montelier never shuns their familial duty. Taxing as those duties can sometimes be. Maybe your siblings could help lighten your burden. You don't know them. But Lorien in charge, or Antoine, or Yvette? No, truly. It must be me. Let's speak later. Goodbye. Something you need? You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. He was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption, how we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburg, a darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. The guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while, and then we drifted apart. That must have been difficult. Back then. I was furious. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. I don't think that's it. You felt guilty because you couldn't help him. Clever you. 
I had a choice, you see. Wallow in self-pity or get away while I could. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. Sad, really. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinter. You think your father would actually do that? No, although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with the message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married. Because you left. That too. I think you should meet with this retainer. Find out what your family wants. I didn't ask what you thought, did I? That was unworthy, I apologize. There'd be no harm in hearing what this man of my father's has to say. If I don't like it, however, I want to leave. Your parents are reaching out to you. Doesn't that mean something? Only that they're trying to choke me. Don't mind me. Let's see what comes of this. <laughs> Greetings. I need to know more about Corypheus. You shamed him when you destroyed Haven. It spoiled his glorious victory. It would be worse to acknowledge that you had done so. He must continue on his course or show weakness. He will return to his plans to throw Ole into chaos and then conquer it for Devinter. I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found an ancient dwarven tide no longer sheltered by the stone. An earthquake had exposed it all to daylight. A thousand dwarven corpses lay, the victims of a dark spawn horde, their last stand marked by one great ring of armor. In the middle, one small body, clutching tightly to a small stuffed toy. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. The Alamari crossed the Frostback Mountains to escape a beast they called the Shadow Goddess in their story. I met the spirit that they fled. She walks the Fade along the southern tundra, weeping lonely and forgotten. Great for Elden formed because a lonely spirit drove her prey away. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a dwarf emerge into the light of day and shield his eyes against the sun. The first time he had seen it, the tears were streaming from his eyes. I sought them from the blazing light, until I saw the rock he held so tightly. Then he laid the rock down gently, and he left it as he walked away. We'll talk later. Goodbye. Mind your step for things, Inquisitor. You were quick to join the Inquisition. Is there something you want? How could I waste a chance to get close to you? And Corypheus? My goodness! And actual physical rifts in the veil? Also, dwarves? We don't dream. So, when mages talk about it, I can only... Well, dream what it would be like. So there's that, and all the things you'll probably find, and what I'll get to make. The rules are different here. Plus, you're paying me a lot. Like, 
Wow, so much. <laughs> what qualifies you to be an arcanist? I took the title because I'm a magical researcher, philosopher, and master of practical application. And I like it. I can't actually do magic because I'm a dwarf, but that also means no risk of possession. Safer than a mage. It means that every skill I have, I've learned through reason and understanding. Coming from the Smith cast, I know the value of mastering a craft. Did you know dwarves invented enchanting? <laughs> Probably. You seemed impressed by the anchor. What does it look like to you? I heard what everyone says what you heard Carivia say. That's a long chain of who said what. To me, it says key. But keys do a lot of things. Open, lock, switch. Some open one thing, some open everything. It sounds like Carivius made it to open, but it looks like you can use it to close. It may be that simple. It sure is pretty. Wish I could see through it. Lagna, show me what you can do. Do you want fire? The first ask is always fire. It's fire, isn't it? Here's how it goes. Bring me the rare stuff for enchanting or masterworks and prep it here, just like normal. Except it's not normal. It's manipulation of primal forces. And I'll make sure it goes just right. You'll see. Let's see together. Serve the law, dude.
might be something here. Better take a closer look. A discerning customer. You'll have my best prices, of course. The worship. What do you need?
Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just, what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, Father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. I'll need you to explain that. Did I stutter? Men and the company thereof as in sex. Surely you've heard of it. This is not exactly news, Dorian. And why should it be? Why should anyone care? I have no idea. This display is uncalled for. No, it is called for. You called for it by luring me here. This is not what I wanted. I'm never what you wanted, Father. Or had you forgotten? That's a big concern in Tevinter, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tavinta family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. Your father might be here to reach out. You could give him a chance. Let's just go. Dorian, please, if you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me.
He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but it's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I think you're very brave. Brave? It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. I don't know what you think you're doing. I'm being clucked at by a hen, evidently. Don't play the fool with me, young man. If I wanted to play the fool, I could be rather more convincing, I assure you. Your glib tongue does you no credit. You'd be surprised at the credit my tongue gets me, Your Reverence. Oh. I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your Worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. Oh? I'd like to hear what these rumors are, exactly. I... could not repeat them, Your Worship. Repeat them? So you've shared them before? I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor, only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. I should ask, do the rumors bother you? I wish they wouldn't disparage you. They don't know you. <sighs> they know you even less than they know me. Perhaps it's odd to say, but I think of you as a friend, Inquisitor. I have precious few friends. I didn't think to find one here. I... Uh, don't speak. I detest confessions, and I'd like to get this over with. Allow me to say I'll stand beside you, against Corypheus, my countryman, or spurious rumor, so long as you'll have me. The Inquisitor's work is never done, I see. I should go. Try not to kill anyone without me.
actually intend to defy the Chantry's evil. But I'll appoint a new divine soon. One will make you stand My command says the Warden has taken up with the Inquisition. The Inquisition? But they were said to be heretics. Many things have been said. Orders may be changing, though. You soldiers and your orders. This noble wanted to meet us. I do. The Comte Boisvert has invited us to his mansion, not far from here. I pray he clears up the deaths of my messengers, as promised. Lead the way. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Bavère. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. I hope helping us doesn't endanger you. Hardly. Even a brush with someone as well known as yourself can become a great asset in Valroyo. Giving you the identity of those who murdered Lady Montilly's messengers seemed the least I could do. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archive. Contract for a life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montilly's trading exile in Orlais. They're not just after your messengers, Josephine. They'll try for you, too. I... I am afraid so, yes. The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montilliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Our legion businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary, by its standards. I'll do what I can to stop these attacks, Josephine. Thank you, Inquisitor. I think I may know how. The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a du paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montelier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to hunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orlé. Even an assassin's word is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. An end to be tied up later.
I'm guessing the actual Comte Boisvert met with a fatal accident. Comte Boisvert slumbers in a nearby closet. Nothing more. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, monsieur. Your idea to seek out du Paraquet to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, my lady. May we conclude with my departure? Go, then. Good day, Your Worship. My lady, I pray we'd never meet again. Well, I didn't think our meeting would end like this. We'll deal with these assassins. I have some thoughts. Let's discuss them back at Skyhold. I'll feel safer with the castle's walls around me. Do you hear something? Mm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Comte Poivre, is that you? Mm. Oh, the lock's been broken off. We'll find a saw. Mm. I realize the cabinet is quite valuable, Comte, but surely... A locksmith, then? Mm. Mm. As you wish. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. Between our soldiers and spies, Skyhold's safer than anywhere else in Fadus. Yet the problem persists. I've tracked down the last two paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. It's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? We can solve this without more deaths on either side. My people are ready, should you change your mind. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Barroyo. 
I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper There are... Very long procedures. And so much... Why did the Duparakids hate the Montilliers so much they set up a permanent assassination watch? A Montillier and a Duparaket fell in love. A young couple, pledged elsewhere, attempted to elope. The whole thing ended so violently, it's a wonder any survived. It's fortunate the Duparaket's descendants hold no grudges. What if the Duparaket's refuse to aid you? I've already contacted the Duparaket's Inquisitor. They're ready to help us. It will be a long road, but a lordship is a chance to restore a proud lineage to their heirs. Besides, I've promised them a heavy bag of coin once this is over. Are you sure the House of Repose will forget this assassin contract on a farmer's signature? It's perfectly legal. In Valroyo's noble circles, a written word is a bond. Besides, the guild would never risk being so unspeakably crass. These assassins are afraid of being seen as impolite. Breaking one's public oath or bond implies a certain poverty in our lane. A common merchant may lack the resources or manners to fulfill a debt, but among the guilds, it would be shameful. You said I'd have to do some favors in Valroyo if we want to make the Duparakets lords. The Countess Dion is our first step. Her lover, a mage from the White Spire, is missing. Bring her news of him and she'll be very amenable to sponsoring the Duparakets as lords. Can you arrange what we discussed earlier, Ambassador? I found the money. The Inquisition will compensate the families of those we lost at Haven. Thank you. News on the House of Repose, Inquisitor. What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We need a judge of the royal court to procure documents acknowledging them as nobility again.
Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The Minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis Wiscott. I'll get you an invitation. anyone alive. Excavation is slow. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The Minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis Wiscott. I'll get you an invitation. Thank you for seeing me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these Duparakets to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? Surely even a minister could do worse than have the Inquisition in her debt. I am a well-positioned woman. I require something more concrete than vague promises of future gifts. And do not attempt to charm me. I am far too old to tolerate it. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? I don't think we'll be missed from the party for a while. Are you quite serious? For the pleasure of your company, Minister. Absolutely. Lock the door. And fetch me some pillows. Inquisitor? Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the charges? Nothing jumps out at me. If I come up with any ideas, I'll let you know. We'll talk. Good work out there, boss. Those blighted nugs won't infect anything now. Shade, thanks for joining in on that escort for Lady Montillier. Whatever. She's great, right? Training hard, Inquisitor. You have the best people, and we're gonna help.
worship. I must return to Valrayo to see that everything is in order. Please join me when you can. My scouts report no signs of danger in the pass nearby. I will arrange patrols to ensure it stays that way. Any luck charting the area? I did what I could, Your Worship. This space has nothing but... space. If there's nothing valuable here, I say let Corypheus have it. The desert is immeasurably more precious with you in it, Scout Harding. <laughs> when did you come up with that one? I had some time along the way. I did find something for you. Old dwarven ruins, on the surface. Impossible, but there you go. The Red Templars are digging them out, with Venatori supervision. Whatever they want, we must beat them to it. I just saw Red Templars heading northwest to here. They might be a good start. I found this map on a dead one. Maybe it shows where they're headed. Good luck. Inquisitor, I have something for you. What is it? This may be worthwhile.
Good as place as any to camp.
strips the throat.
erotic incident I observed, aren't you? You're a mage, not my patron. What no is a seeker of truth exactly? The more I hear, the more his behavior shocks. Salutations. Yes, bound. He is in touch with his base animality and relieves it in a manner befitting his station. His lands are an abattoir of pummeled livestock. But. Animals inhabit his lands and his boudoir. It's rather enough. I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. I'm glad you don't have to live your life looking over your shoulder anymore. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer. Bards entertain the Orlesian courts. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Valroyo when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, trysts, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, Decided this exciting life was for us. You seem a bit... ...steady... ...for such an outgoing lifestyle. <laughs> the life of an entertainer didn't suit me at all. During one particular intrigue... ...I encountered a bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bald threw a knife, and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You were only defending yourself. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. He seemed willing enough to murder you for the game. Perhaps. I feel I'm the last to judge whether or not he would have actually used the blade. In all the commotion... Uh, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Such a gracious woman deserves nothing less. I... Such talk. I'm quite overcome. Should I stop? Oh, no. I mean, yes. I meant, no, I, I don't. Well, if you meant to draw a blush to my cheeks, you've completely succeeded. Let's return to Skyhold before anyone notices. Those who had been cast down, the demons uh -huh. of the gods. Good show. Inquisitor. You are mad. What an unexpected pleasure. You must have had a long journey to the city. Might there be any news from this house? Here's a letter from Ellerly. He's safe with his family in the Dales. Oh, my.
my elderly. Oh, bless you. The Dions will sponsor the Duparakets as a family deserving of a noble title, Inquisitor. You have my word. Now, please, forgive my hastiness, but I must read Elleli's words. Make her keep you. Worship. Leliana wished to speak with you, Inquisitor. It seemed rather urgent. A pleasure. What do the people make of us? There's scarcely a noble house that hasn't openly pledged its support to us. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? Lord Nadovino of Antifa, a friend of my family not normally given to politics. How did you get him to support the Inquisition? Antifa are touched by worthy deeds, Inquisitor. I impressed him with the rightness of our cause. I also promised him 40 bottles from our wine cellar. He's had his eye on the Tevinter ports for years. Questions, questions. I should go. You know where I'll be. Inquisitor, may I have a word? I notice you've paid Lady Montelier quite a number of compliments. You found me out, Spymaster. An entanglement with our ambassador seems most unwise. I asked Josephine to join the Inquisition because we needed a diplomat, not so she could be toyed with. I enjoy being with Josephine. I'm not trying to break her heart. Then I would be more cautious. Josephine's no stranger to courtly intrigue. But love? There she's an innocent. She has no idea you are truly attracted to her. If indeed you are. What do you have against the idea of me being attracted to Josephine? I have not known you long, Inquisitor. Neither has Josephine. Her heart is easily carried away. I want to be sure it's taken by someone who truly cares. So, if you feel anything towards Josephine, I want to know. Yes. I'm very attracted to Josephine. Is that so? Whatever is between you, I ask that you treat her with kindness. For her sake. As well as yours. Whatever happens, I'm glad to see Josephine has a concerned friend here. <laughs> I have so few true friends these days. Those that are left, I deeply cherish. I will not trouble you any further, but I do watch over my friends. Good day, Your Worship.
Gloat all you like. I have this one. Are you sassing me, Commander? I didn't know you had it in you. Why do I even... Inquisitor. Leaving, are you? Does this mean I win? Please don't stop on my account. All right. Your move. You need to come to terms with my inevitable victory. You'll feel much better. Really? Because I just won, and <laughs> I feel fine. Don't get smug. There will be no living with you. I should return to my duties as well. Unless you would care for a game. Prepare the board, Commander. As a child, I played this with my sister. She would get this stuck-up grin whenever she won, which was all the time. My brother and I practiced together for weeks. Oh, the look on her face the day I finally won. Between serving the Templars and the Inquisition, I haven't seen them in years. I wonder if she still plays. You have siblings? Two sisters and a brother. Where are they now? They moved to South Reach after the Blight. I do not write to them as often as I should. Ah, oh, it's my turn. All right, let's see what you've got. This may be the longest we've gone without discussing the Inquisition, or related matters. To be honest, I appreciate the distraction. We've been through enough to drop the formalities and simply talk. I suppose we have. I believe this one is yours. Well played. At your service. Is there anything I should know? Sarah brought me a piece of cake. She thought I looked hungry. Why are you telling me this? Because it was either an act of kindness or a trap. I was hoping you knew which. That's all for now. Should you require anything, I'll be here. <laughs> 